Hey everybody, it's Mike here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the next video in my 3D Code series. Well, today we're going to be doing a video that some of you have been waiting for, the paint room. And when I say paint room, I mean the paint UV mapped mesh room because there is a vertex painting, a painting with deep displacement, uh, all sorts of goodies, but this is the one we're going to be talking about. And if you're familiar with 3D Code, then you are familiar with this paint room because it's been around for a long time. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. We're gonna click on this. We're gonna either click on the folder to load uh, your model or we're gonna take one of these samples. And I'll just grab this guy for now. All right, so here we have it. Now with this on our screen, we need to consider what painting really means. In real life, when you're painting, you either have, well, not either, you have a choice of paint and you have a choice of brush. But here you have also selection styles, and I'll show you what I mean. So first I'm going to go up to Windows, and I'm going to go to Panels, and I'm going to go to Brushes. And these are down here, right? And then up here, where, it's, where the letter T is here, I got four dots, but I can change that to a brush stroke. That looks something like this, 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 and this. So you could say this is selection methods and this is brushes. Right now, this is on default, the one that I use the most. And I'll go in here and I'll take the first one. So if I now were to paint something, I would get something like this. But let's say I, for whatever reason, want to uh, have a rectangular selection. I click on this guy and now suddenly it turns into a square. And that square paints based on projection. So right now, this looks like a perfect uh, square, right? But if I rotate it around, you'll see that it's purely based on camera position and perspective. Now, when you do that in an area like this, for example, looks again, perfect square, but there you have it. So let's hit control set to go back. And let's have a look at these guys. Well, let's say I go to this one, right? Kind of the default. And then I take this tile pattern or brick pattern. Okay, let's go in here. And you can immediately see how that works. All right. Okay, so now that we know that, how about the color, the color choices? Well, here we've got two swatches, very similar to what you would see in Photoshop. If I click on this, I get this uh, color uh, palette. And from here, I can move around, I can change the color I want, and if I got the color that I want, I click on OK, and then I got that color, and I can go back in here and take red, hit OK again. Easy, right? OK, let's go back to our regular brush. Let's get actually rid of these two. And we now have a regular brush. And now let's focus on this yellow thing, this yellow circle with the red line that I'm uh, moving around, right? If I right click and drag, I make it bigger and smaller. That's basically the brush size. If I move it up and down, I'll increase or decrease the red line. So what is what? Let's do the red line down here and let's paint something. There I have it, right? Okay, let's make it much bigger. Right click and drag do that again and you make it much bigger okay <clears throat> excuse me now what's that red line for let's push that up and let's draw again and you basically don't see any difference the reason why is because of these three dots up here and let me explain what they are the one on the right here is uh, the glossiness intensity so if I increase this to 100% and I paint again, you see it's a very glossy, right? And if I go in here and set that to, let's say zero, there's no gloss at all. Let's get rid of all that red, right? But I can also click on it and I can just turn it off. All right, now on in the middle, we have our opacity. So that's basically our color, right? So we can set the current color, which is red, and then the opacity is 100%. Uh, I can bump that way down to, let's say, I don't know, 5%. And you see, if you look very carefully, you see a little bit of red going on there. Let's uh, increase that a little bit. Let's go to 11, right? There you have it. So that's what that is. 
No, let's set that back to 100. Oh, not 200, just 100. All right. And let's have a look at the one on the left. And then the one on the left is depth. And it's depth because you can use this to paint normal maps. It can either be baked out as a normal or a displacement map. And if I turn this on, right, and I paint, now you'll see thickness. And let me just decrease the size of the brush here. Okay, so there you have it, thickness. Now that red arch inside my brush, that is basically how thick that uh, that's going to be, right? So if I right click and pull down, I decrease the strength of that brush. And hopefully you can see that. And if I push it down all the way and do it then, you see that the depth is completely gone. So you can regulate it with a slider or you can simply click on it and just turn it off. So in summary, if you just want to paint color and no depth and no glossiness, you will just have that one like so. If you want to increase uh, the glossiness or use it, you give it a value and you make sure it's on. And you can see some glossiness there, but let me go in here and increase that level a little bit, or actually a lot, 100%. Okay. Yeah, you can see it. It's very shiny. Okay, there you go. And then uh, let's see, finally, you have the depth option. Okay, so that's what all of that does. Now, um, yeah, uh, I would say uh, for normal materials, that's basically it. Let's have a look at our smart materials. Okay, so let's get rid of all this stuff. All right, so we looked at uh, paint and brushes and whatnot, but what about smart materials, okay? Now, if you go to the top right corner, we have our ball uh, icon. There's a word for that thing, but I don't know what it is. And here you can choose different types of smart materials and use them, okay? Now, um, if you don't have that or if you can't access it, what you do is you go to Windows, you go to Panels, and you look for your smart materials, which is right here. And then from here, you have pretty much the same selection. So let's go with uh, metal, for example, right? Now here are a bunch of metal types. If I go to one of these, uh, for example, this metal forge, and I click on it, I will get um, a little preview bar, which is this guy, okay? Now you're not seeing anything because you need to click on this little pin. It will open up the window and it'll give you a preview of what this would look like if I added this material to this shape. So it's not added just yet, okay? Now let's say I'm happy with this and I want the entire object to be covered in it. I can right click and go to fill entire layer, all right? I'll give it a second and there you go. I move my preview window and now it's applied to the entire model. Now, what about adjusting smart materials? Can that be done? Well, if I double click on this guy, I get an overview of every single setting uh, related to the material added right here. And I can change things and I can even save it as a new preset. So I could call it a uh, metal forge, um, I don't know, adjusted or something like that. So you have a lot of control over the opacity, over tons and tons of things, okay? Yeah, uh, let's see, we're going to cancel this. Uh, I'll show you a few more materials just to get you into the mood, if you know what I mean. Uh, let's go with fabric. Uh, here we have a very cool one. Let's go and look at the preview. There you go. And again, I can right click and go to fill entire layer. Now, I do have to remember that this is a how to get started in 3D code, so I don't want to go too much in depth, but you can see on the right here that the UV is uh, displayed and you can see how the um, texture is applied to that UV, right? Pretty neat. So you can directly paint on your UV if you want. If you want a line or whatever on the UV here, you can go in here with your brush. You can even right click and increase the brush size. I hope you can see that, right? And you can go in here and you can literally paint directly on your UV. 
So yeah, uh, we covered the uh, the paint options, we covered the smart materials, we covered the glossiness, uh, how to turn on or off your color if you just want depth, which wouldn't make sense, but you can. And of course, the option here to uh, turn on the thickness, okay? Um, yeah, we talked about this brush size, we talked about the red line inside uh, to increase or decrease the strength of that displacement, and uh, yeah, I think that's more than plenty for you to get started, right? On the left-hand side, we of course have typical things that you would see when you are painting. For example, uh, you know, the eraser, we have the fill bucket in here, we have the pencil, the airbrush. So yeah, that's all things you can play with, right? Okay. Well, I wish you a lot of fun in 3D Code. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy the series, do me a favor and let me know. Uh, I uh, am kind of on a mission here. Uh, there are not many 3D Code uh, tutorials. Uh, that's why I'm doing them. Uh, not a huge amount of people are watching them, but nevertheless, I committed to doing this. So uh, I'm not gonna sway for the limited amount of views. I'm just gonna bring this to a good conclusion, okay? All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.